Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Charlotte. It's been such a long time since I filmed a sit down video. I am going to take things right back to the beginning today or right back to the beginning of this channel. I started this channel several years ago as a way to raise awareness around the neurological complications that you can suffer with from an eating disorder that I particularly suffer with um, and my life with chronic mental and physical illness in general. Um, now, if you watch back on like the first few videos on this channel, there is a very marked difference between me and my life, um, especially physically. I don't want to focus on that because for my own sanity, don't. Yes, I know I'm about twice the weight I was back then. You don't need to tell me that. I get messages all the time saying, wow, you're fat now. Um, thank you. Much appreciated. I kind of wanted to make a video because people come into this channel, That's if that's the first video they see and then they look at some of my new videos, they might be like, hang on a minute, this, this is a bit weird, doesn't quite add up. So I wanted to make a video so that if people want to know what's going on with me and know about the neurological, the neurological complications that you can get with an eating disorder, you don't have to watch those videos because they can be quite upsetting. So I am going to explain in a potted way what happened, uh, what is happening and and what I live with now, so how it affects me now. It's an absolute head fuck even thinking about trying to talk about this because there's so many different things to think about and talk about and a lot of what happened back then, I was obviously very poorly. I'm not gonna be as detailed as I was back then because a lot of time has passed, I think it's like seven or eight years, and I don't wanna give out misinformation. So if you want more details, you can go back and watch those videos. I get a lot of questions about, is everything still the same as it was back then? Um, because obviously I was told I couldn't walk, but yeah, you know that I do walk, so what's going on? That is what this video is about. So, neurological complications from an eating disorder, part two. To explain things in a very potted way, um, I have an eating disorder, I have had anorexia nervosa for, I'm 30, fuck, 20 years. Oh, fuck, 20 years. I will say that I have been, I mean, I don't weigh myself anymore. I know that things have been stable with my eating disorder since I fell pregnant because my baby matters more to me than anything else going on. That doesn't mean that I don't have an eating disorder. I do still have an eating disorder. It's something that I struggle with every day. Mm -hmm. No idea what I was saying, Dexter. Do you know what I was saying? I eat enough to be a good mum to my daughter, um, especially at the moment. I'm really, really struggling with a lot of body image stuff um, at the moment, not just body image, just dys dysmorphia in general. So yeah, it's very much prevalent. I do still suffer with an eating disorder. It is under control. Back then, my I went for long periods of time without eating. They don't know how I managed to do it. I don't know how I managed to do it. I, I couldn't do it now. But yeah, anyway. I was going through a period, I'm not going to go into specifics because no one needs to know that. Um, I was going through a period of not eating. I hadn't eaten for a very long time. And by not eating, I mean I hadn't taken in any nutrition. I had like half a cup of tea a day. So the first symptoms that I got was, I think the first symptoms was like numbness and tingling pins and needles down my legs and in my feet. Um, it didn't last long. I mean, bear in mind, I was bedridden at this time. Um, it didn't last long that, um, until the pain started. It was maybe like a week and then it became pain. Um, and at first the pain was like, you know, if you sit on your leg or like your foot and then you stand up and it's like, ow, that really hurts. Like as the blood comes washing my... It was like that, but like times a million. What I have is peripheral neuropathy. Um, is unlike any other pain I've ever felt. Um, it's a nerve pain, obviously, because neuropathy is nerve pain. Uh, peripheral means, I think peripheral is like the, the end nerve, so the nerves at the very end. So like peripheral vision is like, you know, outside. I think it's kind of the same like with your peripheral nerves are the ones in your fingers and your toes, or hands and your feet. Um, this is gonna be a long video, I'm so sorry. So the pain started, and at this point I'd gone to my GP because it was, it was, it very quickly became excruciating. It was like, something is wrong here. This, is, this isn't right. Um, it was particularly worse at night. As the nerves were dying, because um, the pain is kind of different now, but as the nerves were dying, it was like burning, but cold um, th through my feet. 
they couldn't be touched at all like you couldn't touch them um and I, I remember like sometimes people would touch them more like when i had an mri and someone just grabbed my feet it was like oh shit that hurts so because i was bedridden so i was very weak at the time i had muscle contractures my feet dropped in um I also lost the use of some of my toes and that's something that I haven't regained, but I'll go into that. So as I said at the time, I had the pain, paralysis, I guess, of my feet, partial paralysis of my feet, um, the muscle contractures, numbness. I lost like feeling in my parts of my feet and parts of my legs. I can't remember how it got like found out that it was peripheral neuropathy. I think it was like, they were a bit confused. The doctor was a bit confused. He thought it might be a thiamine thing. I think I did some research and I said, could it, could it possibly be peripheral neuropathy? So that I was referred to a neurologist urgently. I had some tests done. Um, and one of the tests that I had done was a very specialized test. It's, I think that at this time they were thinking, yes, we think it's B12 uh, induced peripheral neuropathy. And so they tested my blood and my B12 was, I think my B12 was normal, but they did a special test that looked at how the B12 is absorbed. And I want to say it's called methyl, methyl malonic acid. It's something like that. So they did that test because they said, that's what we need to look at. And it was like a thousand times out of the normal range. Um, so they were like, yeah, um, your B12 is fucked. You can't absorb B12. Um, they did, did some nerve conduction studies, which confirmed it was peripheral neuropathy. They didn't understand why I had, at the time, there was like, my foot would shake sometimes like that, um, and randomly spasm. I couldn't straighten my legs. It was just all, I mean, I go into, as I said, I go into this a lot more in some of my past videos. Um, couldn't walk, couldn't stand, you know, by, so I think I went to the doctors at the end of November, by the January, I had the diagnosis. I had an infusion, a vitamin infusion, to stop any more damage um, because peripheral neuropathy is where the brain, the brain basically almost like forgets that there are nerves, the peripheral, that the peripheral nerves exist. So it doesn't send the signals down to those nerves to work, so they die. So you can get it in your hands. And I was lucky that my hands were only partly affected. I occasionally get nerve pain and tingling in my hands, but nothing like my feet. So my feet, it was, it kind of starts at the toes and spreads up and um, it spread up to like just where my ankle is. That is peripheral neuropathy. That is how I was diagnosed. Um, I also at the time had some MRIs separate, as uh, something separate, some MRIs of my brain because uh, of my migraines. And they discovered on one of the MRIs that I had cerebellar atrophy. So atrophy of the cerebellar part of the brain. So basically it wasted away a little bit. I spent time in a neurological rehabilitation unit, which completely and utterly destroyed me um, physically and mentally. Basically the neurologist said there wasn't anything they could do uh, because until my, well, they said that my eating disorder would just make it worse. So my eating disorder needed to be treated, treated. Um, and there was nothing they could do. This is what I have. I was unlikely to walk again. This is a key point. So remember that I was unlikely to walk again. It's permanent. The nerve damage is permanent. Um, at this time I was able to stand with crutches, but bear in mind my eating disorder was horrific. I was very weak, um, in a lot of pain. Um, the nerve damage was fresh and I also have arthritis in, and spine problems in my back. So uh, that plays a part in things as well. I then spent time in the neurological rehabilitation unit and I went in able to stand and um, there were some problems with my treatment. They didn't do what they said. I was supposed to have daily physio um, and casting to get my feet in the normal position because my feet bent in like um, they didn't do that. They just cast me. So I had my feet in casts for i think i was in there for like four weeks it was it was awful it was awful that is that um so i then took it upon myself to try and get stronger um i left i was very weak so i spent probably a good two years building up my strength and researching to find things to help my feet um I don't mean the neuropathy, ow. And I spent about a good two years trying to find 
something to help my feet straighten to be able to walk again because obviously that was why I went into hospital didn't happen and I went through several different types of um, splints and different shoes different things and I finally found my walking braces which I there's a lot of videos about my walking braces on here so you can go back and watch those um, they were a lot of money but they changed my life um, a lot of the ones that I found were good but you couldn't wear shoes over them which is useless um, so the ones that I found I can just about wear shoes over them um, so yeah um, oh god so that is what happened that is kind of the past um, I've taken you up to about like five years ago I want to talk about what what I'm left with now and there's obviously a lot of different variations in the last few years things that have changed but there are things that have fundamentally stayed the same and they are the most important things and that's what I want to talk about and that is the pain my mobility um so I am I have been left with chronic pain I am in pain with the neuropathy every day because I've spent every day in pain um for the most part in the day it's it's just something you get used to I am used to the pain now um at night it is unbearable it keeps me awake it is excruciating um the last few months it's been as bad as it was when my feet were dying um, that's what i call it like, like as the nerves were dying as my feet were dying uh as for my mobility um i can walk i can't walk without pain the more i am on my feet the more pain i'm in so i use a wheelchair to prevent too much pain that could mean i can't stand for a week I can walk for a short distance, um, but no matter what I do, there is pain involved, both pain at the time and later on. Um, the problem is, is that the pain at, it's not the pain at the time that's the problem because in terms of the neuropathy, the more I'm on my feet, the worse the neuropathy pain gets overall, um, I have found. It's like there will be an increase, a percentage increase in pain in my feet. What I should also point out is that I have arthritis in my ankles as well. Um, I have arthritis, as I said, I've got arthritis in my hips and my uh, and a problem with my spine. I found out that I'm going to need spinal surgery uh, because my discs are crumbling. In everything I do, there is a large amount of pain involved. There are days when I cannot stand up and being a mum to a two year old, that is incredibly hard. Um, it tends to be later in the day. So luckily it's when Edie's in bed, but the other day Edie was in bed. Um, I went, I kind of got out of my bed to go and get her. It was about eight o'clock in the evening. And I was like, shit, I can't walk. But I had to get to Edie because she was crying. So I literally kind of shuffled holding the wall um, with a crutch. I got to Edie and obviously couldn't have the crutch then. So I kind of shuffled back and I got to my bed and I collapsed. So I had to kind of throw her onto my bed and I collapsed on the floor. And I then couldn't lift her up again to put her back into bed after she'd had some milk and kind of a settle down. So she slept in my bed. Um, that's been happening a lot. Like my legs just, I cannot, I cannot move. Um, and that is, that's probably more to do with my hips, to be honest. Like when I'm in bed, I have to have like the duvet not covering my feet because just the duvet touching my feet hurts. I can't wear socks in bed because it hurts. Like at the moment, I am aware of, um, and it's not even bedtime, but like my feet, just the t there's intense pins and needles um, and like pressure. Um, it's like a burning pressure. It kind of feels like, um, like, you know, when you've got a saucepan on like a hob or whatever and you're boiling water and it's really hot inside, like if the saucepan looks fine, there's a lid on it, but it's really hot inside, but it's like vigorously burning, vigorously boiling away. That's kind of what my feet feel like. Um, but it's also cold, it's cold hot, it's weird. The worst thing for my pain is not actually walking, it is standing still. Because just, you know, if you're walking, there's like pressure, 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 pressure. But if you're standing still, it's just pressure, like that. Um, so it's very, very, very painful. You know, I was told all those years ago that I'd never be able to walk. Um, and that wasn't because of ne the neuropathy, that was because of the muscle contractures and the fact that my feet have dropped in. Like even now, like my foot, like my resting foot is like 
dropped in like that and I can't like this side is almost paralyzed I can't pull my foot up to that position which is why I have the walking braces you know my life is considerably not more enriched and fulfilled than it was all those years ago I couldn't do anything so I didn't do anything um but as I said I put I've put in a lot of work to build my strength up you know a lot of that is nutrition much as I fucking hate hate to admit it because I hate eating I hate food um but a lot of that is nutrition and being a healthy weight. When we're not in a global pandemic and the gyms are open, I go to the gym and I do strength exercises too. I don't think I do them to improve things. I do th I do it to stop things going backwards very quickly because I do go backwards very quickly. I lose muscle very easily. And something that I have to, I basically just have to work really, really hard to be able to function, to be able to stand, to be able to walk. Um, I will never be able to go for a leisurely walk. <laughs> I, you know, I get really jealous of people that are like, yeah, I'm just going for a walk just because I want to. I can't do that. It's increasingly mentally harder because of Edie, because I know we'll be able to run around in the park with her. You know, she doesn't know any different, so I'm hoping that she's not going to be affected by it. But it does make me feel a bit inferior and um, shit because I can't do those things. And I can't provide her with that normality. But this is our normality and she's very happy anyways. Uh, the other neurological side effects that I um, spoke about. So the concentr uh, concentration, the memory problems, the focusing, that is still something that I, I struggle with. I deal with it. Um, the thing that is really hard to deal with is the pain, especially at the moment. Um, I can't, uh, for nerve pain, their opiates don't help. Um, and opiates give me a migraine anyway. Most pain, like paracetamol, ibuprofen, none of that touches it. It doesn't help nerve pain. Um, didn't have this type of nerve pain. Um, there are certain medications that you can take um, and I have tried them all in the past and they didn't help, but I would be willing to try them again. I'm breastfeeding still at the moment, so that's not an option, but they are all lifelong conditions. They are chronic and they are progressive. So the neuropathy is likely to get worse. You know, I've noticed that in the sort of seven, six, seven years since I've had it, it's gotten worse. Um, I'm stronger than I was, but the pain is gone worse, you know. I have been talking for so long and I feel like I've just, I hope I've given you the right information and I hope this answers any questions that you may have. Um, if you do have any more questions that please feel free to, you know, drop them below, uh, contact me on Instagram. It, uh, my handle is AZ of my mental head. I have a private account. Um, so send me a message if you want to follow me and I will accept. Thank you so much for watching this um, and thank you for your continued support. I will see you all again soon. Fuck me, it's going to be a beast editing this. Thank you. Take care. Bye.